I climbed in the front seat after dropping off two patients from a scene flight. I noticed the low ceilings and I half kiddingly told the pilot I was going to keep him honest. Shortly after takeoff, we muttered something about it not looking very promising. We continued to the shoreline where the ceilings were even lower. I'm not sure I want to proceed, I said. Silence. We were getting lower and lower. I'm, I'm really not sure I want to proceed. Silence. Stop! Stop! I do not want to go any further. Silence. I was frantic and looking for possible landing sites. Ocean on one side and mountains on the other. The new paramedic begged the pilot to listen to me. I spotted a refinery and asked him to turn around and to land there. I'm not going to turn around. I don't know what the weather's like back there. Incredulous, I replied, well, you sure as hell don't know what's in front of you. We were 300 feet off the ground and I could not see in front or underneath us. Well, we only have 19 more miles to go to get to base, the pilot said. Do you know how many dead pilots have said those exact words? I felt completely helpless. I put my head on my lap and I thought about my small babies at home and my friend who had recently died in an EMS crash. I asked the pilot to please tell me where we were so I would know how my obituary would read. As I raised my head, we were enveloped in clouds. I had to fight the feeling that we were upside down. I didn't mean for this to happen. The pilot whimpered. It was now my turn to be silent as we made a right turn over the ocean and began climbing. We had to climb nearly 6,000 feet to get on top of those clouds. We don't have enough fuel to make it to the airport, he said. Guided by barely visible lights and the voices of the firefighters on the ground, we inched down for what felt like an eternity.